Hi, welcome to yet another presentation in the Toko Microarch pro project by the Nairobi Masico and the Sailor Corporation. My name is Mudian Kennedy. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to take you through the requirements that you're supposed to meet as a participant and the journey that you're going to, to go through throughout this Microarch project. The first thing, I'm going to take you through the requirements. First and foremost, you're supposed to have a personal smartphone, which has at least an Android version of 6.0 and or higher, that is 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10, for the lucky ones, the latest version, which is Android 11. Your smartphone should have at least an internal storage of 100 MB. Your phone might display the storage in terms of GB. So you just take the number of available storage space in GBs and multiply it by 1024 to get your storage in MB. The other requirement, you're supposed to have a functional email account, which is logged into your phone. The email is the one which you use to create your several accounts that you are required to use during the pilot program. The final requirement is to have a functional MPS account that is, have an MPS number registered under your phone, your national ID. The other part of this presentation is the guidelines that you are required to follow throughout the program. The first one I have mentioned it earlier in the requirements is the user email. You're supposed to have one email address that you'll use in all your accounts and that will be used for communication by the narrow bits whenever deemed necessary. The second requirement is you're supposed to have your Valora key and account number and you should not lose it. This will be very useful just in case you have to replace your phone or you have to set up your Valora account again, you'll have to use that key. So it's very important you not the key down and you make sure you are the only one who has access to the key because if it falls in the wrong hands, chances are you're going to lose your funds. That requirement, you'll be expected to conduct the work yourself and give it your best shot, give the best quality work that you can manage. Do not let other people work for you using the app do the work personally as you're the one who met the requirements and the one who was chosen to do the work. The fourth requirement guideline, you'll be required to attend 100% of the trainings that will be offered by Nairobits. Failure to which you can be disqualified from the program or you'll miss some important information that is offered during the training which is useful in your working process. The fifth guideline, during the physical meetings, you're supposed to meet all the COVID-19 uh, regulations that are set by the Ministry of the Health in the country. That is, wear a mask all the time, practice social distancing, and sanitize regularly. The sixth guideline, you're supposed to address all your concerns through the your assigned trainer. Each cohort is given a trainer who is responsible for handholding the cohort. You'll be given a phone number to your trainer or an email address. You can reach out to them anytime during office hours that you need any assistance. The seventh guideline, the participants should assign a media release form. This form will be will give Nairobi's Master Call the Silo Foundation permission to use your images or videos whenever necessary. If you do not want the three corporations to use your images or video, you can refuse to sign the media release form. The eighth guideline, you're supposed to complete a number of interviews and surveys that will be provided by Nairobits. The links to these interviews will be shared via WhatsApp or your email address that you'll give in step one in the guidelines and during the requirements. You're supposed to fill all those surveys.
the last step is the journey that you are going through there are four weeks of hand holding and the short period of training that would be about five to ten days let's say a week the first step is the recruitment this tip you have already unmatched this tip if you are hearing this video you made it the recruitment was done by Nairobi. that's done january and the last quarter of last year then you came for screening early January. If you were selected, you received an email address inviting you for training. Then you start working. After recruitment, the next step was onboarding. Onboarding is where you'll be given guidelines on how you'll start working, how you'll get the training, get the registrations that will be recognized as a participant in this pilot program. The third step in your journey is training. Training is the purpose of these tutorials. You'll give, be given guidelines on how to work, how to cash out, how to make sure your work is quality work, and be given any other necessary information in terms of offboarding and how to get help. That will be the training part. The other bit is the mentorship program. This is the hand-holding session, which high cohort will go through a period of four weeks. During this period, you'll be allowed to work on pilot jobs, which are aimed to train you to gain the necessary skills and experience that you'll be able to use during the open platform jobs. During this week, you'll be assigned to a trainer you can talk to them whenever you are met any challenge during work or you need any assistance or clarification. The last step after handholding, where well, we expect that at this step, you already have the necessary skills, you already have the information that you need to work in Toka. You'll be required now to work on your own. You no longer have access to trainers' assistance, but you still have access to work. This will be the end of the pilot program. At this step, you'll only have access to the open platform jobs and you'll no longer have access to pilot jobs. So let me give you a quick recap on what is expected of you when you work Toka. The first thing, you'll have to download Toka and Valora apps. Toka is the app which you'll be using to work and Valora is simply a wallet will be storing your funds before cashing out to M-Pesa. In order to cash out to M-Pesa, you'll have to link it to an M-Pesa account through a service provider. In this case, you'll be using Kotani Pay. The next step is viewing the available work in Toka app. To view the available work, you will be taken through a process where you just click start work in the app, then select open with the current available job provider, then you'll see a list of jobs that you can go ahead, click on any and work on it. The other step is accumulating your earnings. Your earnings will be reflected on your home dashboard in the Toka app, that will be your current earnings. When you cash out, the balance goes back to zero, but when you start work, they start accumulating again. You can cash out in small bits, or you can cash out the end of the job, your call. The other step is transferring funds to Valora anytime. This is a huge advantage in the app. Nobody is telling you to cash out on the first of the job of the month, at the middle of the month, at the end of the month. It's your money, you're given a full freedom. It's like a table Cash out anytime you want, any amount you want. Then the last bit of the workflow is transferring your money to a person and cash out via the agent. Like after doing the second step of the workflow, the agent you're going to use in this pilot program is Kotani Pay. That's how you'll get your money to, to a person. That's it for this presentation. 
if you have any question like i have said in the participant mentorship program you can reach out to any of our trainers thank you